Hey guys, I'm back today with a new video. Today, I'll be showing you X-Mouse Button Control by High Resolution Enterprises. So as you can see here, I have the program open and running. When you start it up, in the corner here is a little icon in the notification area. And that's just an easy way to configure it. So firstly, I'm going to show you this list of profiles. Now, you can create profiles for separate programs, for different parts of the screen, or different sections of a program. Each profile has a layer. Each layer can be named and can be configured for each button. So, first what I'm going to show you is how to add a profile. So all you got to do is click on Add here in the corner, and it shows you this list. In this list, you can either choose the program that is running at the moment, for example, Windows Media Player, or you can select the file manually from Program Files or anywhere else. Or, even better, is you can choose the specific window by dragging this black icon right here. So what I'm going to do is I'll grab Windows Media Player. So here we have Windows Media Player and what we can do is drag the black selector anywhere. So we can choose for example the list of songs, we can choose this section right here, or we can simply choose the rest of Windows Media Player. Now I already have a profile set for this area over here, but once you've added a profile, I'm just going to add one for my notification area. As you can see, toolbar window. And that's it. So here we have Windows Media Player right there and Windows Media Player now playing list. So those are the two sections of Windows Media Player. As you can see, as I highlight or hover over different sections of a window, it automatically selects that profile, which means I don't have to have the window selected and focused. So if I click over here and hover over these two, I can easily switch between these profiles and use those profiles. Now, what can these profiles do? Well, for example, here in Windows Media Player, I have my two side buttons designed to play and pause and go to the next track. So this is my top one and this is my bottom one. And I also have my scroll wheel right there to turn the volume up and down. So if I grab Windows Media Player right here and I hover over it, then what you'll see here in the corner is my volume changes as I scroll. So if we look here, you can see that it detects that I'm scrolling and scrolls the volume. This also means that when I push this button, the music starts playing, as you can see down here. When I select this button, it switches songs like that and of course the other one plays and pauses so that's that each of these buttons can be reprogrammed to do anything or almost anything um, that you can do on a computer Anything in this list can be done. A really good example of this is in Google Chrome because I've set these two buttons to simulate key presses on a keyboard. And all that means is when I push the button while hovering over Google Chrome, I can easily switch between tabs. So what I'll do is over here, I'll open up my window and when I drag this over here 
and I press this button here, I can switch between different tabs. This doesn't only apply to sections of a program, they can also be sections of a web page if there's flash involved. So as you can see, when I hover over here, Chrome flash highlights, and that's this one over here. Now, Google Chrome here has only these two with customizations, and that is the two simulated key presses. But Chrome Flash has left click, media volume up, and media volume down. The scroll wheel changes the volume on this as well. So if I am viewing the web page, I can scroll, or I can turn the volume up and down again by scrolling. And if I click on this button, I can pause and unpause videos in the same way that I have in Windows Media Player. Now, there are a number of ways of switching between layers. The most basic is this list over here. Once you've named your layers, depending on the current process running or the current window you have open, it will automatically rename these layers and you can select which one you'd prefer to use at the current moment. However, you can also set hotkeys to automatically switch between layers when you select a key combination. And the other method is uh, modifier hotkeys. Basically, if you hold down a button, it will activate that layer for that period of time. When you let go, it'll switch back to the default or layer 1. If you don't want your profiles to automatically switch when you hover over a program, you can simply untick the setting under Advanced Global Settings. In these settings, you can also change your mouse speed, which doesn't override Windows settings, but simply changes them. You can swap the fifth and fourth mouse buttons so that they're backwards for you, or if you're using remote desktop, you can disable your hotkeys and your profiles so that you can use that computer as if you were in front of it. For scrolling and navigation, these settings are similar to your normal mouse settings. You can invert your scroll wheel. You can change your settings to scroll with lines instead of pages or the other way around and you can also change your scroll method. So that's all for X-Mouse button control. Be sure to check it out at highres.co.uk slash downloads. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out my blog post about it. I describe a few extra little details and I link to the download link as well. My blog can be found at wizardcm.com. So that's X-Mouse Button Control. Thanks for watching.